Hey, welcome back to Holistically Healthy TV. I'm your host, Jim Bertamy, and today is episode 27, where we're gonna be talking about taking your time during exercise. This is a really important point where I have to remind my clients a lot of times, or I'll see it, whether uh, you know I'm, I'm watching other people working out somewhere, or I'm watching it on TV or something like that. You know, taking your time during exercise isn't about necessarily having to go slow, all the time. It's also about being mindful of the movement that you're doing and making sure that you're not injuring yourself. Because if you're injuring yourself while you're working out or you're about to be injured while you're working out, now you're probably going to be out for two, three weeks. And you know, it's tough to get back into it as you probably have already had in your life at some point where, you know, maybe you stop working out for a week, two weeks, uh, you know, six months, a year, and then you have to get back into it. It's a little bit more difficult. So the thing is that taking your time is really important. However, we have a lot of things today like CrossFit, like high intensity, high intensity interval training. We have classes and we have boot camps. And a lot of these things can have a lot of pluses to them, but then they can also have a lot of minuses too, or negatives, right? Because CrossFit uh, can be good as long as the program is being put together the right way, the exercises are being put together in the right order, uh, as far as, you know, more difficult uh, before, uh, least difficult and also rep range and high intensity interval training is more about time and also CrossFit has a time component. You're beat, you're racing the clock, you are racing your opponent or your class members and there is that sense of camaraderie there which is great and it keeps people motivated and keeps people excited but at the same time we have to prevent injuries and we have to be careful of injuring ourselves. Um, and then you have classes and boot camps with kind, which kind of have the same dynamic. So I'm gonna show you an exercise today where, and give you a couple of examples as to when you can kind of be a little bit more loose, I guess, with your time and speed of movement and how fast you're doing it. And of course, you always wanna keep good form while you're doing the movement, no matter how fast or slow you're actually taking it. But you wanna take your time and you wanna be more mindful of the movement. And so if I can give you one thing or if you could take one thing away from today, it's if intensity is high, you need to stabilize. And that's really, really key. And I'm gonna show you that in the exercise that we're about to do. So let's take a look. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing is the single arm cable push. So this is kind of, uh, I'm gonna be demonstrating the exercise to show you how to do it. So you're gonna actually learn how to do the single arm cable push. If you saw last episode where I showed you how to do the dual cable push while using the BOSU ball, or having one foot on top of the BOSU ball, this is slightly different. We're gonna lower our center of gravity just like we did with that exercise. And if you didn't check that out, make sure you check that out uh, after you're done watching this one. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna add a, uh, we're gonna do a single arm cable row, a push, sorry, not a row, uh, which adds some rotational aspect to it. So we're challenging the core and the obliques a little bit more as we're twisting and pushing. And it's a very, very functional movement and we're using a single arm. So it's a little bit more challenging. One, because of the rotation factor and two, because we don't have a uh, counterweight in this arm. But you know, so right now I have 40 pounds on the cable machine. So here's how you start off the cable machine and notice the speed of the movement. And, um, you know, I'm going to pretty much do it at a moderate pace. So what you do, um, there's different variations to it, but with the one I'm just going to show you is the, the lower body is going to be static, uh, as opposed to dynamic where we would incorporate a weight shift. So what you're going to do is you're going to lower the center of gravity. The arm is going to be back. You know what? Maybe it's better if I show you this way. So, the arm is gonna be back here, okay? And I'm gonna keep myself in a neutral grip as opposed to a uh, pronated or overhand grip. And I'm gonna keep myself here this way, and I'm gonna use a reciprocity movement. So when I did the dual cable push, I didn't need to do this. But use a reciprocity movement, which is kind of like, you know, if a, if a boxer throws a jab, he's gonna pull back with this hand here, and then he's gonna come through with this hand. So it's called a reciprocity, which is kind of like a give and take. So, and that helps to promote uh, thoracic mobilization here. So I'm going to use, I'm going to inhale, I'm going to draw my belly button in to stabilize the spine here and exhale. Inhale, come back and exhale. Now, when we talk about taking your time, coming back, remember what I said about being mindful, coming back and getting a nice stretch in the chest muscle and in the shoulder muscle, and of course not too far, but you want to have a stretch. You don't want to come to here, you know, push forward this way and have a nice good contraction and then just come here and just push. And you're almost doing like little half reps and you're not really taking the muscle through the full range of motion. Okay, so you come back, you get a decent stretch and you come here and you have a good full contraction as opposed to keeping your elbow bent where you're just stopping here because you just want to 
push it forward, right? And also you're just not using momentum. I could be doing something like this. And then the, the chest is contracting to a certain degree, but you want to have a nice fluid movement here. Okay. And that's what I talk. That's what I mean about taking your time and feeling the exercise because this probably doesn't feel right. You know, and if really, if a person's just trying to get done an exercise because either they don't like the exercise or they don't even really feel like working out that day, or they just don't uh, enjoy exercising at all, then they're doing it for the wrong reasons. And they really need to kind of evaluate what they're doing, why they're doing it and pick an exercise that you actually like to do. Cause I always say like my mentor, uh, one of my mentors, Paul check says, pick an exercise that you like to do. Cause you're going to be more inclined to actually do the exercise. Okay. So if you hate running, don't go out and just run because someone tells you you have to run to lose weight or be fit or something like that. Uh, you know, pick an exercise that you actually enjoy doing and that you'll have, uh, some fun with. So now if I take the weight though, and I put it up to eight, okay. I can't go as fast or even at a moderate pace. Now the tempo might have to change and I have to be aware of that because now the load is a lot heavier. Okay. So now if I have 80 pounds on the, on the cable and I just, you know, it's double what I was using before. Now I really have to stabilize my spine. My core really has to engage because otherwise I'll be pulled back here. Right? So you want to inhale, inhale here again, draw the belly button in and, and come back and be nice and fluid about it. If you take, if you're, if you're trying to go like this with this, it, you might wrench your shoulder or it might pull you back. So if you're here, take your time, do a nice mo motion here. If you have to make it a little bit more explosive because that's the training stimulus you want, then <sighs> sorry if it's loud in the microphone, but you would typically exhale, right? So if you're going to exhale as you push inhale, as you come back, as you expand the chest, that's really important. And the trunk is initiating the movement. So you would twist and then push. So twist and you can see the weight is already moving here twist, then push. So you're integrating the core with the upper body, but you're noticing that I'm taking my time. I'm doing a nice fluid movement. Even if I have to go a little bit faster, I'm not just jerking the weight forward to push it. I'm actually still getting a nice good contraction of the muscle and still getting a good workout. And even just from those few heavy reps, you can hear I'm already a little out of breath. So take your time. Don't get injured. Have fun while you're exercising. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions, please leave it below. If it helped you, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Um, so you can get alerts when I have new videos coming out, connect with me. Uh, cause I'd love to connect with you, answer any questions, help you in any way I can on your journey to health and fitness and keep watching because together you and I we're getting healthier every day.